after it's the first 11 verses. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that you that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are various gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are various services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one of the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Friends, as you're able, would you stand as we, we affirm our faith this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. second hymn this morning is Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy. Let me get open up to it. Pay attention to the words. It's one of my favorite hymns. It's not necessarily that, well, it kind of has that interesting, uh, like a like the Balm and Gilead kind of a, a reaction in your head when you, but the tune's cool too. Let's try it. Come ye sinners, poor and needy. Weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me with his. Let not conscience make you live. 
Let's pray this morning. Gracious God, on the one hand, we're excited to start a new year. And on the other hand, the old year and the year before just won't quite go away. Maybe that's a way for us to understand the way that it has been for the church in all these years when Jesus fulfilled the promise. Yet the world still hasn't fully embraced Him. So we gather together to pray, to sing, shake hands, give hugs. We gather together to join forces, to be united in the kingdom of God, not against the world, but to save the world. We know that you're the great physician and the great healer and we pray for those suffering, those who are sick from any disease, those who are dealing with dreaded diseases, those who are undergoing treatments. And we look for the opportunities to praise you for your amazing gift of healing through doctors, medicines, and sometimes miracles. Because we live, we also have to deal with the end of life. And there have been so many that we know, so many of our relatives, so many of our friends that have moved from worrying to grieving. So God, we need your strength. We need the Holy Spirit to come and fill us with your Spirit. We need to believe that you are the miraculous God worker of miracles that you are. And even though sometimes we pray to be rescued and we're not, you will never abandon us. So God, we pray for patience, for grace and mercy, and for the realization that you were with us always in the good times and when we struggle. In so many ways, our lives mirror the life that Jesus shared on this planet. From the excitement about the birth of a baby to the fear of a person capable of changing the world to eventual persecution and death. And then he rose from the dead. It's that Jesus that prays for us now, prayed with us then, and taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So our next hymn is, uh, Lord, you have come to the lake shore. It has four verses. They'll all four be on the screen. And so we'll and we'll play and we'll sing. If you happen to speak Spanish and want to sing it in Spanish, that'd be fine too. Lord, you have come to the lake shore, looking neither for wealthy nor wise ones. You only ask me to follow. So well my possession. 
stand for the reading of the gospel. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and their brother Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this for the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And you may be seated. In a previous, previous, way previous life of mine, I worked for a place called Maryland Fried Chicken. It was one street off the campus of Texas State University, then known as Southwest Texas State University. And we cooked chicken, just like Kentucky Fried, only it was Maryland Fried. And we served really good chicken and really cheap beer. In fact, because of the way taxes worked, you could buy a glass of beer for a quarter and a Coke cost 26 cents. And we were across the street from the college. And we had a foosball machine. And we sold Michelob and Pearl and Lone Star. Michelob was really expensive. The other two were cheap. So people would come in there being haughty-taughty and they would buy the expensive stuff. 
And that's why we'd serve them for a couple of pitchers. And then after that, we could have served them the slop out of the bottle and they didn't know the difference. And that's what this story is about here. The, the steward looks and says, wait a minute. Nobody serves the good wine later because, you know, you can't tell the difference. New wine. You know, there's a friend of mine, Bo Fisher, is a pastor of a church here in Pasadena called New Wine. I think it's a great name for a church, but right now in 2022, I think it's a great name for the experience of what the Holy Spirit needs to do in the Christian community around here. Well, maybe ever. In other words, what we did was what we did, and it was some of it great and some of it wonderful, and I'm talking about we, the church, over the years, but what we are doing now needs to be the good stuff, even though the other stuff was good too. Things have to count more today. We need to pay more attention to loving each other, to grace and mercy and peace. We need to care about people at a different level. And when I say we, I'm including me in that. I need to work on that. There are some people that I have trouble caring about. How about you? There's some people's actions that I don't really agree with. There's some people's lifestyle that I'm not fond of. There's some way people treat other people. I don't agree with it. But you see, Jesus didn't come along and say, love the people that you like. He said, come along and love all of the people because I came for them all. It's really hard to, to grasp when there's a person uh, going into a synagogue up near Fort Worth and taking hostages, including the rabbi, and to think that somehow or another I'm supposed to care about that person. And, and I know my friends that are police officers over the years have had to deal with this so many times. You, you catch the bad guy and sometimes you have to, you know, wrestle, fight, whatever. And then immediately, as soon as you get them handcuffed, you try to save them. You bandage their wounds up and you do all this stuff. You know, it, it just sometimes doesn't make any sense. But I really believe Jesus is talking to us directly today. I know what this passage is about. This is the revealing of Jesus' miraculous abilities to the disciples so that they can follow Him. And at least for about five minutes, they believe in Him. But I believe this text is not just a text given to us for them. I think it connects to that spiritual gifts text I read from 1 Corinthians where we have a responsibility to be manifestations of the Spirit to the world in which we live. And that scripture from 1 Corinthians makes it pretty clear. There's a lot of different gifts. Some people are really good at praying. Some people are really good at, uh, you know, inviting people, evangelism. Some people are really good at doing the underground work that nobody ever sees. There's a lot of that goes on. A lot of stuff happens that nobody realizes somebody has to make it happen. I remember... <laughs> When I uh, got to move out of a dorm, when I lived in a dorm in college, it was a, I had a meal ticket. I could go to Jones Cafeteria at Texas State University anytime I wanted. It was open all the time. I could go down there and eat three times a day, four times a day. If I was on the other side of campus, I'd go to the other dining hall and I could eat there with my little meal ticket. All I had to do was have it with me. I didn't have any responsibilities. I didn't have to pay the light bill. They even gave me a phone in the room. And then I moved into an apartment. Now, y'all are going to laugh now because the rent was $95 a month. It was a duplex. The gas bill was about $21. The electric bill was probably $13 or $14. The phone bill was probably more than all the rest, but you had to have a phone. They didn't have cell phones then. And then I, I got paid. Uh, I was making a whopping dollar and 35 cents an hour, so I had to add all that up to be able to have enough to pay the bills when they came. And sometimes it didn't work out. I had lots of friends, many friends. You'd go over to their house, the lights wouldn't be on. <laughs> or, or you'd go over there, and, and I'm just, I was always too cheap to pay light, late charges. I would go get bottles out of the ditch or something, but I wasn't going to have a late charge. But 
but the uh, there you know I'd go over to their house the phone would be disconnected or I'd go over there and, and the, the, they wouldn't have lights right now and some of them even knew how to go and rehook them up after the light guy got there. Yeah, so I don't think it's a gift from God to be able to manage money, but I think it's a gift. What this says, some people have wisdom. Some people have the utterance of wisdom, and some people have the ability to explain. And I think one of the things that has fallen short in our world today is that nobody's explaining anything. We just assume everybody gets it. Yeah, well, there's a church service, 11 o'clock, come on down. We're going to have this Apostles' Creed thing. And we're going to say in the Apostles' Creed, uh, oh, something about the Catholic Church. Wait a minute, we're Methodists, not Catholics. Why are we talking about the Catholic Church? And nobody ever bothers to explain it's a little c, means universal. We have a language. It says here some people have the gift of language. Some people have the gift of, of explaining that. One of the reasons we stay isolated from the rest of the world is we speak a language they don't understand. They don't have a clue what a foyer or a vestibule or a porticoche or a chancel or an acolyte is. I know because I went to school. I got to teach them. We don't, we say the little C Catholic in the, in the Apostles' Creed because it means the universal church, all Christians. And I know I have at least one friend that would say, why don't we just change the word to universal? Well, it's just tradition. You know, we have candles up front. We don't need them to see anymore, but we have tradition. But you know, in a few months, you're going to see signs all around town. They're going to say, VBS starting soon. And that applies to all the Christians, though. They know that's vacation Bible school. I can get rid of the kid for a whole week if I take them over to the Baptist church or the Methodist church. But the people that need to be reached by the church have no clue what VBS is unless we go and put it on the whole sign, Vacation Bible School. But see, that costs more, takes a bigger sign, and it's more inconvenient. It's the way we keep what we do secret so they don't get to play. You see what I'm saying? So I think this scripture has a way of, of having meaning for us today in both of them. Yeah, I know. You know, Paul is talking about the, the utterances of the Spirit and all that stuff, and we could go into great detail about that. But I think he's also telling us, friends, every single person on this planet has received a gift from God. Now, figuring it out is the challenge. And sometimes you can't do it alone. Sometimes somebody needs to tell you, did you ever notice that you seem to have a gift for this or that? Just because you work in a bank doesn't mean you're going to want to be on the finance committee. You know? Just because you teach school doesn't mean you're going to want to teach Sunday school. That might not even be your gift. For you, teaching may be a job. For my mother, it was a gift. Absolutely no question about it. She was better at teaching school than she was at almost everything else. Oh, she was a good mom, and she was a good grandma, and she was a better than average cook when she paid attention. I was, after we moved to a house that had an electric stove, I really thought everything was burned. Because she was used to gas. She never figured out that that had variable speeds on that electric thing. It was always on high. And boy, you better stand there or it was going to be burned. I thought pancakes were, if she cooked them, were supposed to be black. I thought cornbread was crunchy. That's just the way it was. But she had a gift for teaching school, and I know that's true because of the people that I know that had kids that were taught by her. My dad, you know, he had a different kind of gift, really. He didn't like teaching. He was a student teacher in Woodville, Texas for six weeks. And he walked out of that six weeks deal, and he said, I hope I never have to sit in another classroom the rest of my life. I don't think I like kids very much. Now, he didn't really dislike children. He just didn't like students. But he was great with working with the Boy Scouts and working with my kids and doing other stuff. He was, he was, but he had a different spiritual gift. His was calmness and compassion. You just hardly ever saw him really mad. You almost never heard either one of them. I never heard any curse words in our house 
And only my mom one time, she she dropped a, a big gallon jug full of roofing nails on her foot. And I heard one of those four-letter words once. Then she didn't say it a lot, just once. And I was probably 21 or 22 before I ever heard my dad say those words because he didn't have any need to say them when I was around. Once he saw me as another uh, adult, then yeah, he told me stuff. But uh, it was just, the, we never heard those words around our house. But it wasn't just them. I, I knew all these other people that had these different gifts. These gifts of, of compassion and of, of caring and reaching out. Lily White, uh, Melissa's grandma, was like a second mom to me. When my mother was near death in the hospital, and, and, and you know, ever, and I was a preacher at the other church, and, and there were a lot of people praying. But Lily White, and, and gosh, I don't know, she's never been a 90 got in her car and drove over there and sat with me. We didn't even have that much to talk about. But she sat with me. Spiritual gifts are all around. Some of us have the gifts of being able to see through problems, right? We can, we can see stuff more clearly. Other people can't visualize anything. Some of us have the ability to just be perseverant and stick through it. Some of us are just bullheaded enough never to give up. And I really think that's what Christ calls for the church today in 2022 is be stubborn. Don't give up. Don't be negative. Nobody wants to walk into a negative place. One of the things you may have never noticed here, when we had bulletins, and maybe we'll have them again someday, when we had bulletins, never in this church did you ever see a bulletin with our position of the month against the budget. You know, we talk about that stuff at the board meetings. If you want to find out where we are financially, come to the board meeting. But I am not going to have a visitor or a guest come into this church and say, oh my gosh, that place is so far behind. We'll never be able to catch up. And why would I stay there? I, I, it's not, I learned growing up, family business gets discussed at the family table. If you want to be in the family, we'd love to have you. And you don't have to join the family to come to the board meeting because we don't do anything there that's secret, but we would love to have those discussions. But those discussions are going to happen in an environment where solutions can be found, not in here where we have disparity or despair. Let me reassure you, the lights will be on this week. We'll be in church next week. We're going to be here. And we're going to be here the week after that and the week after that. And, and you know, the pews are going to slowly fill back up and we're going to have more people again. But most of the solutions that need to be found in the Christian community can be solved with one simple phrase. Now, take, understand this is a, a concept, not a spiritual concept. Volume is the key. What does that mean? More people solves the problem. Not just our problem. It solves the kingdom problem. Jesus didn't come to just get a few people to circle up, 12 of them, and say, oh good, we're going to go change the world. He wanted that circle to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow until there were more Christians than anybody else. Me neither. Yeah, Jesus may have some input here in a minute. <laughs> Oh, that was good. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's the baby is. I always wondered what the Holy Spirit sounded like. Now I know. We have the opportunity, I really believe this, friends, to, to uh, lift people's spirits, not add to the fear they already live in. People are absolutely afraid of everything right now. <laughs> And we're included in that, aren't we? I mean, how many of us parked our car out front and didn't set the alarm? How many of us lock our doors at night? I mean, Kathy and I even set the alarm in the house at night while we're home, and we're the only ones there. There's never been a break-in like that in our neighborhood, but we find ways to put it off on other people to solve all of our problems. We'll let the police protect us, but we won't talk about that guy that's suspicious in our neighborhood. We don't get involved in the politics because we don't want to share with somebody that have them dislike us anymore. You know, hey, get over that. You're not going to agree with me. I'm not going to agree with you about everything, but we can still be friends and do ministry together. 
We're letting the world dictate what it takes to get along. We're letting the, the world outside of here tell us what it's like to be Christians because they have the wrong idea. We're not people of fear. We're people of a sure future. We know that we're going to be with God and we'll be there either today or forever, whenever it is. We don't have to worry about it. We've got that assurance. Amen? We've been given that promise. We want others to have that promise. We don't want somebody to be left out. Even if we don't like them. Because you see, when you get to heaven, you're not going to care. That's the big part. The one, the person you despise down the street or that runs down your road at three in the morning with the loud music going, and yeah, when they get to heaven, that's not going to happen. So let's just pray them into heaven. Let's pray them into understanding that somebody cares. We've had a person visiting here for some time. They came up to me and said, I never went to church before. I don't know anything about church. You've got to teach me. Isn't that where we all are, really? We need to be taught. Turn off number seven. See if that fixes it. That's interesting. It's pretty cool. I hope it shows up on the video. We maybe has little things floating across the screen. Or maybe Jesus is standing right behind me going, yes, right on. Jesus went and performed that miracle. I always get a kick out of that transaction. Woman, what do you want me to do about it? It's not my problem. But then he does what mom asked him to do. Our Roman Catholic friends base a whole lot of their love for the Mother Mary on that scripture. And we sometimes misinterpret, I think, what they believe. They really don't believe that Mary answers prayer, but they believe that Mary points you to Jesus, which is exactly true in this passage. We probably don't spend enough time talking about Mary, what a commitment she made, how much of her life she gave to bring to us the story about new wine. I asked my friend Bo one time, I said, well, if you name it new wine, does anybody looking for the old wine? You see, because sometimes people have called us the New Hope Church. They really have. There used to be one on well, Spencer, but they, is that new hope? No, the old hope is good enough for us. And the old wine is good too, let me tell you. The gospel story is the story. It doesn't change, but how we tell the story, how we relate to others, how we show love and care for others, that has to change. We are not better than they are because we're here. In fact, in a lot of cases, we're just as hypocritical as they are. We're just as misguided as they are. We're just as broken as they are. The only difference is we know we're broken and we're willing to be put back together by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're not in competition with the neighbor churches. We are not in competition with them. But we are in competition with our old self. And each one of us should pray today that we're better than we were yesterday. And with God's help, we'll be better than we are today, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's all these scriptures are about. There's not a test that I know of that really works to find out what your spiritual gift is. Just try out different things and see what makes a difference. See what works, because I can tell you, when you find that sweet spot of your spiritual gift, it will not feel like a burden or hard work or like you've been put upon. It will feel like you're finally getting to do what you were called to do. And there are lots of things that happen in that realm. I would say friendship, empathy, compassion, resilience, those are all gifts of the Spirit. Resolve to not give up. You know, if the disciples would have gone home after Jesus' 
crucifixion, packed up and left. Like the guys on the road to Damascus did, we won't be here today. But they gathered together in one place. The Bible tells us when two or three or more are there, Jesus is with us. His assurance as he leaves this planet is, Lo, I will be with you always until the end of the age. Doesn't say till December 31st or January the 2nd, till the end of the age. So, in order for us to grasp spiritual gifts, in order for us to experience new wine, we have to open ourselves up to realize that the perfect order of getting the new wine first, the old wine later, that's not always going to happen in God's world. Sometimes God will take those of us that have been punished and hurt and beat up and trod down on and will use us to be new wine for somebody else. I think that's exactly what's happening right now in the, in the Wounded Warrior mo mo Movement. And, and uh, so many of those things where we're taking veterans that come back and have post-traumatic stress disorder, the ones that can help them the most are the ones that have been there and experienced it and got through it. How do you think people are going to get over their sin if we don't confess it, admit it, and say only by the grace of God have I been able to get over it too? It's not that complicated. Whether it's AA or the Rotary Club or whatever clubs there are out there, we all have the same issue. It isn't about me. It's about the kingdom. Even Rotary International did God's work. And what this the, the Corinthians passage says, good stuff that happens has to be done in the name of God because it can't happen otherwise. Polio almost eradicated the world because of Rotary International. Neonatal uh, diabetes almost eliminated in the world because of Kiwanis. Blindness being done by Lions Club. These people, they're not churches, but they're doing God's work and they're full of God's people. So when I'm calling us to service in this kingdom, it's not just service to drop down here to 2838 Lillian work. It's wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Your spiritual gifts will lead you to make a difference because friends, I believe together, all of us united amidst our differences can change the world. I want to be a part of that. How about you? We can make a difference. So let's keep plugging along. Ask somebody what they think your spiritual gift is. They may have a better sense about it than you do. I can tell you there's people I know that perseverance is their great special gift. And other people it's humor. Other people it's friendship. Without the whole orchestra, it just doesn't sound the same. I think later on in the next chapter or two, we would hear in Corinthians that if, ever, if we were all eyes, we wouldn't be able to hear anything. If we were all ears, we wouldn't be able to see anything. The diversity of the body is what makes it the most powerful, life-changing, earth-changing, world-changing entity on this planet. The diversity of the Christian body. And you've been adopted into it. So now that you're in, what's your part in the story? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're not passing an offering plate yet, but we'll, we'll probably do that soon. We have a basket in the back. We're glad to accept your gifts and offerings there. As we close our service today, we are going to uh, sing, Blessed Be the Time That Binds. And uh, I just want to say, I, I'm looking around at who's here. Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of people visit over the last few months. Today's not one of those days, but we've got a few people here. But, but uh, if you, if you're, some of these people are visiting and, and and they inquire, let them know there's more to do here than just come to church. Uh, we have Bible study for men, Bible study for women. We can have if there's a if there's a demand, we can have evening Bible study. We can do a lot of other things. Besides that, I'm convinced that people really don't get to know each other and worship very well. 
And so we've got to find ways to engage people outside of worship. And together we can make a huge difference, not only in their lives, but in ours, as we widen the horizons of who we visit, hang out with, and do stuff with. Friends, as you're able, would you stand? Let's sing this closing hymn. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our It's the power of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit that will get us through. Amen.